In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at the studio scene and how it's put together. To create all the geometry in the studio scene, we're using the freeze geometry node. And the freeze geometry nodes are combining all the assets together into single assets. If we have a look at this asset here, I'll turn the freeze geometry off and I'll turn the lighting on. And you can see the original assets. Now these are the original assets that make up the floor space. All of these assets are modular tiling assets. And what that means is you can put them in any configuration you like. If I grab the picker here and grab this asset here. You can see that the asset is six by six meters and it's tiling at meter intervals, meaning that it will connect seamlessly to the asset next to it. All of these assets have got tiling UV channels. The tiling UV channel means that the textures, when they tile next to each other, you won't get a seam where the assets butt up to each other. They've also got second UV channels, meaning that you can bake all these with light maps. We've got um, several material slots on each asset. If I go to this one, it's got one, which is a wood plank texture. If I go to the edging asset, press P, select the edging asset. You can see that this has got two textures on it. It's got a yellow concrete and a metal edging. Once we've got all our assets nicely laid out, we use the freeze geometry. And what the freeze geometry does is it connects all these assets together into one big 3D mesh. And the reason we're doing that is because all of these assets are quite low poly and there are a lot of them. They're low poly because they're nice optimal meshes, meaning that you can have more in the scene at once. And the reason you use lots of them is because it helps you build more interesting and varied environments. And once you connect them up to the freeze geometry, you're reducing the overhead of all the nodes that originally make it up. And it's quite good because it's a non-destructive path, meaning you can go back and forth between the objects. So if I turn the freeze geometry off and I move an asset, then I turn the freeze geometry on, the assets moved along with it. So it's a really good non-destructive quick modeling technique and it's really good for getting quick results. We've built all the wall pieces in a similar way and they all tile together. So you can make some quite interesting scenes very easily with very basic shapes. And then all you do is tie them together using a freeze geometry node. Now, once you've frozen all the geometry, the next thing is we use ray trace lighting in the scene. But when you use ray trace lighting, it's quite a bit of an overhead. So we're using the path tracer here. When you turn it on, the scene's going to run very slowly. That is why we bake all the ray trace lighting into light maps using the bake lighting to object node. We've set all this up for you. So all you have to really do is create the geometry the way you want to update the freeze geometry node once you've moved the geometry about and then bake all the lighting. If you look in the description below, there's a link to how to bake the lighting. The next thing to look at are all the different stages. So we've put together several different stage areas. We've got this one that has a custom moon week and we've got some interesting geometry just to show you that you can have some quite high poly assets in the scene and the scene still runs really well. These assets aren't part of a freeze geometry because they're quite high poly, so they don't really need to be added together. Whereas the lower poly assets, it's always a good idea to combine that geometry into a freeze node just so that it runs better. We have all the branding materials here and all the geometry for the branding materials. If I turn all this off, hit back and play again. I hit back and play again. So the freeze geometry node updates when I've turned all those materials off. All of the meshes for the branding can be updated. We'll go deeper into the branding in the next tutorial and we'll show you how to set it all up. Regarding lighting, all the lights are over here and we've located them in places where there's actual light sources. We have a lot of area lights in this location. We have these area lights up here that are mimicking the lights from above. We've added some area lights above each of these areas to give it a bit of lighting. And we've also added some Omni lights to this light and these hanging down lights over here. And we also have these spotlights that have lights attached to them as well. And they light the stages. And the reason we've done that is it just makes it more realistic if the lighting has a light source. And once we've set up all the lights, as I've said before, we use path trace lighting and light maps to light the scene. And what the path trace lighting does is it bounces all the nice realistic lighting around the scene and you get lighting from all the emissive materials and it just looks a lot more realistic. And then we bake that into light maps in the bake lighting to object node. 
So the scene's not massively complicated. There are some nice areas with a few bits of detail in. The main thing to do when building scenes for virtual production is to make sure that you build all of your assets to human scales. So all of the chairs, things like that, the steps, the stairs, all of those kind of things, even the height of the stages should be real world scales. And the reason for that is once you put your talent in the scene, if any of the assets are oversized or undersized, you're going to see that immediately. So it's really important that everything is real world scales. So in the next part of this tutorial, we're going to be covering the branding 